Hello, this is Brennan Wilmington of the Left Turn Network, and welcome back to another Lumen Stock Car Invitational Series race. This is race number 20 of season number three, and we are, for the first time in this series, headed to Joliet, Illinois, south of Chicago, to race at the one and a half mile Chicagoland Speedway. Of course, this is a track that's been kind of like on the brink of death in real life, but, uh, you know, we have raced here before uh, in the Hulu Combined Cup Series in 2022, but that was a different version of Chicagoland. This one's more up to date. This one's got a cool day to night transition. And I'm really excited for this race here today. Joining alongside me for the first time this season, we have Thomas Troxel. And uh, Troxel, uh, I don't know how many races at Chicagoland you've seen. I know, I think you've raced here in the Wawa Cup Series several times. So uh, what's your experience with this track? What are you expecting to happen here today? Well, I've won here in the Chicago, I've won here in the Wawa Cup Series at Chicagoland, but I'm expecting to see some tight pack racing, some three wide in some parts, and maybe even some four wide. I know these cars can get a little crazy, and especially in this series that these drivers are going to be able to do a lot with the little track they have. So we'll have to just see what goes on. I can't believe that I forgot that you won at Chicagoland like a month ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am your driver. That is insane. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, uh, on the front row, uh, Falcons fans look away. It's 28 to 3. Uh, it's Billy Smith filling in for Montana Sherman in the three car. This is, I believe, Oh, where's the helicopter camp? There it is. Uh, this is, I believe, his first uh, pole, if I'm not mistaken. He might have gotten one in the 08 at some point, but yeah, uh, Billy Smith, he hasn't done too much filling in for the three. He's done a serviceable job, but he hasn't done anything super flashy so far. This could be a breakout race for him, you know, besides the other breakout races he had earlier in the season. Alongside him, speaking of breakout races, Adrian Wheeler in the 28 had his breakout race. First at Kentucky, where he finished second to Akia Tajima. That's the last mile and a half we went to. And that was a crazy race with 27 lead changes. Uh, and he also won, of course, a Canadian Tire a couple of races ago as well. Row number two, we got the 32 of Tamarin Bellinger and the six car of Holly Martin. I believe this is Bellinger's best career start, so good for them. They are, of course, competing for the championship in the Amateur Series with Riverbend Racing. And uh, they're not the only Riverbend Racing driver in the field either. Row number three, we've got the 25 of Luana Connie. This might be her best start of the season as well, alongside the 27 of Oscar Duval. In the correct car this time. I accidentally put him in the Season 2 car at Indianapolis, if anybody noticed that. Uh, but fixed, it's fixed for this week. Row number four, we've got the 1 of Jacob Lopez and the 41 of Karina Willis-Calloway. And then it's the 18 of Zach Dearman and the 92 of Kate Summers in row 5. Row 6, we've got the 45 of Rebecca Raymond and the 88 of Joe Smith. Then it's the 70 of Andrew Kreider and the 65 of Jack Gino. Darren Walker in the 8 alongside your points leader, Tim Berry, in the 11, who has broken the record for the largest points lead ever seen in this series. A 56-point lead heading into this race, looking to extend it even further. Then we have the 7 of... Lori Jackson in the Ticket Smarter car, and the two car of Rhea Wickham, the other Riverbend racing driver, also competing for the championship in the uh, Amateur Series. Then we've got the 85 car of Charlie McCarron and a former Riverbend racing driver, the 77 of JT Boyd. I'm sure Anthony's uh, excited to see three of his current or former drivers in the field today. 52 car, that's Adrian Pearson, alongside the 79 of Kobe Hollenbeck, 39 of Lakin Herndon, and the 01 of George Bryan. Then it's the 99 of Akia Tajima, and the 36 of Ashley Blake. 55 of Michael Harvin, alongside the 16 of Corbin Taps. Then it's the 66 of Tyler Landry, and the 29 of J.B. Cheneau. Kevin Dupont and the 98, who uh, Troxel is best friends with, especially after the All-Star race. And the 81 car of LaTanya Gray. We got the 57 of Shauna Everett and the 24 of Cooper Spur. And rounding out the field here at Chicagoland, it's the 62 car of Vinny Scholes. 67 laps here today should be a two-stop race. We might get some cautions. We might not. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, it, it's really kind of a coin flip whether we get any or not. But 
This is a very fast track, one of the fastest on the schedule. They approach and sometimes reach 200 miles an hour going into turn number one. And, you know, they're, they're turning 27 second laps uh, on uh, uh, fresh tires here, and that's very fast for a mile and a half. So uh, going to see some fast speeds. We're going to see some fast action here. It's going to be an exciting one here at the Chicagoland Speedway. Drivers, start your engines! And the field will roll off of the back straightaway here at Chicagoland. Troxel, who do you think is going to win the race tonight? I'd be looking out for that 25 car of Luana Connie. They've had a really rough season so far, and this good run here could go a long ways into their future career. And I'd also look out for that one of Jacob Lopez, last season's champion. He is probably looking to make some noise this season after a honestly disappointing year so far after winning the championship. Lopez hasn't had a bad year thus far. He did get a win at Kansas, another mile and a half, but uh, definitely not up to the standards of last season. We'll see what he can do here today. It is Billy Smith and the 28 of Adrian Wheeler who is going to lead them to the green flag, and we are racing here at Chicagoland. Coming out of turn number four, Billy Smith looking to lead the first lap. Bellinger and Luana Connie are side by side for second, and then they're three wide behind them. And this pack is definitely all grouped up here at the start. Over the later run, they might spread out a little bit, but this is another one of those mile and a halfs where it's hard to get away from each other. But Billy Smith with a good jump on the start. Bellinger will move into second, and now it's Oscar Duvall in the 27. Trying to make a move on the Wanakani for third place as we complete lap number two. And yeah, Tamron Bellinger there had a really bad start, but was able to recover and regroup and get back into the second position. Luana Connie tried to send it three wide there. Couldn't really do anything to pass Tamron Bellinger as the one of Jacob Lopez was going really high there off the corner, but he manages to stay in front of that 18 car as you see Adrian Reeler in the 28 going below the 25 of Luana Connie now. And they are really grouping up back here, almost four wide. They do try to go four wide sometimes at this track, and uh, sometimes it just doesn't work out. There is a little bit of room for them to do that, but really not much. you got to be keeping that car straight. Oh, uh-oh, the two-car of Ray Wickham is into the wall there. And, of course, that's one of the amateur drivers that's in the race here today. She did a pretty good job when she was last in the car at Milwaukee but uh, not off to the greatest of starts there as Billy Smith continues to lead, but the 27 of Oscar Duvall now making a move on the fellow Toyota, Tamron Bellinger in the 32 car. It's really polar opposites for the Riverbend racing drivers right now in this race at Chicagoland. Adrian Wheeler fourth, Luana Connie, Holly Martin, a lot of drivers that have been struggling this year, looking for some good runs, and so far they're having them. Yeah, it's good to see all these guys that have been struggling to get these good runs all year long finally having it come to fruition now as billy smith in the free will placing montana sherman is leading right now after racing in that 08 car for a really long time and that 27 car of oscar du taking second place away from tamron bellinger he's having a great run so far bellinger looking to the inside as they continue to battle each other for second and uh billy smith in the three car in replacement of the injured Montana Sherman. Of course, he got injured after a big crash at Kentucky on the back straightaway a few races ago. But Billy Smith is your uh, Lumen 500 winner from earlier in the season when he was running part time in the third car for Patriot Racing in the 08. Now running the remainder of the season as uh, Sherman is out for the foreseeable future. And the sixth car of Holly Martin, you see her getting underneath as the front four cars are all single file. Kate Summers in the 92. She's shown up here, your Dover winner. Oh, just she's going to slide up the track, though. Big opportunity here for Zach Dearman to get some spots as he made it roll on the inside lane. And he's going to get underneath the 92. I believe this is for the seventh position. 
trying to make that inside line work, but that outside line is still holding pretty strong so far. But you can definitely see that 18 car and that 70 car looking to try to make it three wide into turn one. He'll back off, slide up the track a little bit. That 88 of Joe Smith looking to make a move to the inside. There is now the 27 of Oscar Duvall's going for the lead on Billy Smith in that three car. Oh, he's going to slide up the track a little bit. He's going to get off the bottom, but he's going to get enough grip to get past the three car of Sherman. And these front four are now getting very dicey. They were single file for, oh boy, that's not good. The one and 88 were making contact there, going into turn one, but they keep it straight. No accident back there. And now they're still side by side. Billy Smith got back under the 27 of Duval, possibly a crossover off of turn number two. And Bellinger and Wheeler are right there. Very close quarters racing up front. The 27 going to try another crossover, but the three is going to go down the block. Will Duval have enough momentum to try and pull a move into turn number one? It looks like he's going to try. He's going to stick that nose underneath. Ooh, he gets it right on the corner panel, and they're side by side down the back straightaway. Also, I have to mention that battle for third place between Tamron Bellinger and Adrian Wheeler. Those two cars are having an amazing battle right now as they're getting starting to get caught by the 18, the 6, and the 25. At the line that time, it was Oscar Duval by 23 one thousandths of a second. It's been a struggle for Duval. His struggles have been very well documented in this 27 car. He's racing for his career out here, trying to see if he can find any ride at all. Uh, as it's assumed that he's going to be out of that 27 car after this season. No official statement from NH Motorsports yet, but we can kind of all assume after three tough years in that car, especially with JT Boyd showing what these cars can do and Holly Martin when she was there, it's pretty logical to, to give him the boot at this point. So Duval is racing for his career out here. A win could definitely, a win could be enough to convince some team to sign him. Look at the blocks down the back straightaway. Not enough though to hold off the three of Billy Smith and these two are having an incredible battle for the lead up here. Yeah, and that's brought back Holly Martin in the six who's gonna try to get into this battle along with the 18 car of Zach Dearman and a couple cars behind him. They, they, they're getting real racy up here. I'm so surprised to see this much racing this early on. Oh boy, look at this. We've got a split in the pack here. The 92, the top eight have pulled away. I'm wondering if someone had an issue, but it doesn't look like anyone did. Maybe someone just got the wall or something, but Duval holding off Smith for now. And then there's a dog fight for third back here as the six tried to get under the 32 there, but the 18 got underneath and Bellinger with another big move to the inside of Adrian Wheeler. Wheeler is going to slide up the racetrack. A bunch of them are going to slide up the racetrack. And as the tires wear out, they're going to have less and less grip. They're going to go up the track more. That's going to give drivers more opportunity to sneak it down there if they're able to arc it into the corner right. Did you see the 25 of Luana Connie attempted to do just that? But they are three wide behind the leaders here. And Billy Smith's going to pull to the inside of Duval. Entering turn number one, we've got another side-by-side -side battle for the lead. Man, these guys can just not contain themselves from racing this hard. They're going to burn up their tires, and like you said, they're going to slide a lot later on in the race. We might see some four wide and some cars going in the wall later, but as of right now, Duval is holding off that three car of Billy Smith. Both of them trying to make a name for themselves in this series, especially Duval, who is racing for his career. Billy Smith's already made a name for himself. He's uh, pretty much guaranteed to have a full-time ride for Patriot Racing next season, considering Joe Smith is retiring, and we don't know what Montana Sherman's future holds, so he's probably going to get one of those cars, but Duval has no ride security whatsoever, so uh, a lot riding on, this 20, on the drive of this 27 car here. Front five have now pulled away as once again Billy Smith looks to the inside, and I also want to mention that it's about 88 degrees here at Chicagoland, so it's a very hot and slick racetrack as well. So that's also going to contribute to the car sliding around more. We saw this in the amateur race at Mansfield yesterday where it was 92 degrees, and there were a lot of, of crossovers happening because cars were having trouble arcing the corner and just sliding up the track. Of course, that was a short track, so different style of racing there, but we're seeing some similar uh, slickness on the racetrack that we did on the other side of the Great Lakes region. 
Yeah, these cars are definitely sliding a lot with all the hot weather that's going on right now at this racetrack, especially the track temperature being as hot as it is right now. These cars are not getting much grip at all as Billy Smith dives back to the inside and Tamron Bellinger follows in suit. They're going to be side by side, two rows deep at the line. Duvall holds the lead for now, but Billy Smith's going to have a good run in the turn one. He checks up a little bit. Duvall is going to clear the three car and retain the lead. An amazing drive from Duvall so far. He has been impressive holding these guys off. Dearman trying to get a twofer here in turns three and four. Entered the corner in fifth. He's going to come out in third. What a big move from the 18 car. Zach Dearman also on a contract year, but, you know, he's been doing a good job in this 18 car. I imagine that Hudson Motorsports will re-sign him, but still probably wanting to get one more win here. And he has kind of usurped Latanya Gray as the main driver for this team. So uh, he's been carrying the Hudson Motorsports banner so far this season really been carrying the ford banner as most of the ford teams have been struggling this year uh maybe something uh it maybe has to do with the uh trauma around checker flag racing and blake Everett motorsports and how they kind of split up but ooh, big move there by luana connie in the 25 there's another ford running pretty good here in the top 10 and they're kind of jamming up there in the middle of the corner the six the 65 of jack gino I believe Gino's the highest running Honda right now. The Hondas are struggling. The eight of Walker's not too far behind, but yeah, not too many Hondas running up here. And of course, one of the Hondas, Cheryl Simmons, didn't even make the race today. So Hondas were on top of the world at the start of the season, but they kind of hit a wall around the middle of the season. And uh, we're on lap number 23 now. It's not going to be too much longer before these guys come in and take their first pit stops. Yeah, they could split this race in the thirds or they could split it in half at around lap 33. But right now, they're looking to be still full bore, sending sending it all out on the track as Duvall continues the lead over Billy Smith and the 18 and the 32 of Tamron Bellinger. Here comes Deerman looking to the inside of the three of Sherman. He's just got the nose there. Did not give the three car very much room off of turn two. I think he checked up a little bit, so he wasn't able to get underneath. Bellinger tried to get under, but the 18 blocks. A lot of blocking going on here from these front few drivers. And these guys are going so fast that it isn't the easiest to build up a run down there, even with the draft. So that's, that's something that we've been kind of seeing. It has not been that easy to pass up here. But it definitely has not been impossible. We've seen guys like Deerman and, of course, these two leaders make big moves on each other. Deerman's going to try and go for a move in a turn three. The three car bobbles entering the corner. This is the opportunity Deerman wanted. He's going to try and move into the runner up position here by holding that inside down the front straightaway. Yeah, Deerman's looking to have a really fast mid to late run car here as he's trying to make the move to the inside on Billy Smith. But here comes Tamron Bellinger in the 32, trying to make it three wide. And Joe Smith has caught this pack as well and in Andrew the 88 Kreider. car and Andrew Kreider and the 65 of Jack Gino. Three cars pulled into this pack, split away from that main pack. I wonder if they've saved their tires a little better than everybody else's. Deerman is still trying to get to the inside of the three of Billy Smith while Oscar Duvall still leads here at Chicagoland. Duvall loves seeing these guys battle because they're too worried about themselves and not catching up to the 27 car. And we saw Oscar Duvall have a good run going at Indianapolis, but the pit crew fumbled on the final re uh, on the final pit stop. So hoping for that to not happen again on that 27 crew. And it is just a hornet's nest back here for second. Wheeler might have something to say uh, to Deerman here. But first, he's got to get by Billy Smith. The, the front row sitters right here battling for third now. And these cars that started up front are staying up front here. Uh, they've definitely got some very strong race cars here uh, at Chicagoland. And now the 18 has kind of cleared these guys. And he is set sail and trying to track down that 27 of Duval for the lead. Ooh, that 28 car slid up a little bit higher than two there in turns three and four nearly put billy smith in the wall but he's going to continue the battle with him for that third spot maybe clear him in the, here in the turn one as oh here comes the 65 car of jack gino he has caught this pack and he is trying to slice and dice his way through make way like zach dearman did as the three now goes to the inside of the 28 of wheeler here comes the other patriot racing car joe smith 
Oh, he's gonna oh, push the I'm issue. Cool. Oh, that was an ill-advised move for the 88. Thankfully, did not end worse than it did. He's still trying to stick it three wide, but there's really no room for him. And up at the front, the 18 of Dearman has caught Oscar Duval. Will he pass him before the cycle starts? Oh, I think the, the cycle might be starting right here. Dearman going very high. I think the 27's pitting. Yeah, here, here comes, comes Duval. Trying the to short pit. Bringing the 3 and the 92 with him. And it looks like... Them, along with Holly Martin, are the only ones coming in here early in the race. On lap 30. So, trying to short pit here. Trying to pull the undercut on these guys. We'll see if that works out for them. Yeah, we'll have to see because only four cars came down and they're not... They might be in a pack together and they might not. Here comes the 18 of Deerman, the 28 of Wheeler the night or the 32 of Tamron Bellinger here comes the 70 70 85 a lot of cars are coming down this time by trying to split this race and have a couple cars staying out like Jack Pino and Joe Smith but still a bunch uh -oh. of cars came down slow stop for the three car the 92 is going to get out ahead of him so that was not what Billy Smith wanted but that's exactly what Oscar Duvall wanted and he has a huge gap on those other cars that short pit with him We'll see how he cycles out compared to these other drivers. Jack Gino led a lap last time by, and he's going to come in and pit this time along with basically everyone else. So we've got, it looks like, three different strategies here in terms of what lap they came in on. There you see the 27 in the trioval, and exiting the pits is the 18 of Deerman, and we'll see where he cycles out compared to Duval. And Duval is at Duvall. full speed entering turn two, and it looks like he's going to take the lead, or rather retain the lead, after the pit cycle. Yeah, he's going to keep a little bit of gap there to the 18 of Deerman, but Deerman's going to be on those fresher tires, considering Duval pitted a couple laps earlier. So we're going to have to see how that runs out at the end of the race, but for right now, it's looking like Duval has a pretty strong hold over the lead of this race it's gonna get out ahead of Gino as well on the 65 car Gino's gonna have two lap pressure tires than the uh, 27 he's gonna have one lap pressure tires than the 18 as it looks like he's gonna cycle out into fifth I'd assume I think both the 28 and the 92 are gonna get by him because Gino has yet to get fully up to speed but either way Gino will have the freshest tires of these guys up front but Oscar Duval has a two second lead now over the 18 is Zach Deerman. That's a pretty comfortably sized lead, honestly. And they're three wide already. Fresh tires, they immediately start going three wide. The 32 and the L1 are both going to get by Billy Smith. And Smith has fallen down to ninth after being one of the fastest cars in that first stint. So that slow pit stop definitely hurt the three car. Yeah, and, and as I, I, I noticed as we were going through those cars, the, the 77 of JT Boyd, the teammate to Oscar Duval, is also up here. Oh my These goodness, look at him go! Three wide, he looks really fast so far on this early run. These NH Motorsports cars are cooking right now. He wasn't quite able to get by Kate Summers, but it looks like he's going to get the, the spot over the 65 car of Jack Gino. They're trying to go three wide again here. Billy Smith thought better of it. But a lot of furious racing here towards the front. But Oscar Duval has set sail. This is the fastest we've ever seen this 27 car. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely shocked by this run from Oscar Duval. We thought his career would basically be over after this season, but he's making it known that he's still here and he's here to play as he has a two second lead over the 18 car. Just an incredible run there from and at 27 of Oscar Duval, as the 28 of Adrian Wheeler looks to the inside now. As here comes the 77 trying to look three wide on the bottom. JT Boyd having an incredible run as well. JT Boyd, Adrian Wheeler, a pair of rookies here on the inside lane. Boyd looks like he slipped up a bit on the inside. They're three wide here, the 65 and the 92. Looks like Gino will clear him though. And Adrian Wheeler trying to take over that second position from the 18 of Deerman, and it looks like he will, but will Deerman cross him over on the exit of turn number two? Gino's got to get under him before Deerman even has the chance to. Here comes the 65 with that fresher set of rubber. 
Then these guys around him, definitely taking advantage of it right now as he's going to move up to third and potentially second here. We'll see what the 92 has to say about it. Here comes Summers on the inside in the trioval. Yeah, but the more that these guys battle, the more that Oscar Duval is going to be able to save his tires and be better in the long run. Here comes the 01 on the inside. George Bryant. Looking to make, George Bryant looking to make a move, trying to get up here in that Gillette 01. That Gillette. sleek looking machine. The Gillette brand new sponsor on that 01. He got it after his win at Milwaukee. He's fully funded for the rest of the year, so he's going to try and make a run at this championship. And this is an incredible step for this uh, small team, George Bryan Racing. But uh, running up in the top 10 here today. And where is your points leader, Tim Barry, by the way? Oh, he is deep in the field. He's very Not deep in the field. I He is way back there. He's in 34th. So this is a big opportunity for a lot of these guys that fell way behind him to chew into that points lead and the 30 oh the 36 ashley blake is out with a gearbox failure and the it just keeps stacking up for ashley blake it's been a terrible season for that 36 car yeah but as we were talking in the pre-race the 11 of tim barry has the biggest points lead of any lsci driver ever and he's looking to throw it away almost immediately here at chicago land allowing drivers like George Bryant and Joe Smith to pounce on it. Yeah, but th that's the that's the benefit of having that big lead is that it won't hurt as much when you have a bad race. That 56 point lead, that is well over a race's worth of points. So he's still going to have the points lead no matter what going into this race, but he can't have too many more of those runs. And it, it reminds me of last year when Tyler Landry entered Indianapolis with a 39 point lead, which was the big, which was the biggest we'd seen at that point. Landry ended up crashing out and Hollenbeck, who was the second place driver in points, ended up winning the race. And it just oh, flipped, it flipped the points immediately. The 92 washed up the track a little bit. And we're seeing a lot of these cars slip sliding around again. Looks like Boyd lost quite a few spots there. So that's not ideal for the 77 car. But I tell you what, Oscar Duvall's lead is shrinking. It's gone under a second. It's now seven tenths of a second. Wheeler, Gino, and Deerman are on their way. They're getting bigger in the mirror. That's 27 car. Yeah, it looks like Duvall's lead may be a little too big as these cars have finally decided to stop battling in the moment I say that Jack Gino goes to the inside of Andrew Wheeler trying to take that second spot away. Battling or not, though, they are catching that 27 oh, car of goodness. Oscar Duvall. Three They're getting car, real dicey back there. <laughs> the three car got very squirrely off turn four in the middle of three wide, so that gave me, oh my goodness, they're not going to go oh, four, four wide for a second, are they? Nope, 28's going to pull it off on the high side, be able to get that run on the high lane and keep that second spot. Here comes the 0-1 to George Bryant. On the outside, the 0-1. They are still catching that 27, even with all this battling. I think Duvall is just being out of the draft. It, it just killed him, just killed the, the, the lead that he had. So, you know, he, he just couldn't hold on to that lead forever. They're not gaining on him. They're gaining on him by about a couple of tenths. So Duvall's still got a couple of laps to plan what he's going to do when these guys do catch him. And I do say when. I, it's pretty clear that they are going to catch him. So, oh, Gino up the track. Here comes Summers. Brian tried to peek down low. He's still trying to peek down low, but there's no room for him down there. And uh, he's going to stay behind the fellow Toyota in the 92. A lot of Toyotas running up front here. We've got five of them in the top eight. But Wheeler is getting ever so closer to that back end of the 27 car. And Deerman is pushing him up there. The Fords trying to work together. Yeah, it does seem like the Fords are trying to work together right now to take down the common enemy known as Toyota and Oscar Duval, who has dominated this entire race so far. They're getting a huge run on him down the front straightaway. He's going to look to the inside here in turn one. Not going to be able to get to his quarter panel, but he know that he is there and he is ready to battle here. Just, just 20 laps to go. JT Boyd just pulled a slide job on the 01. I thought they were going to get together, but they keep it straight. There's been a couple of times where they've almost wrecked up here, but... Again, they've kept it clean this race so far. 48 laps, zero cautions, so that's definitely something you like to see. 
as Duvall maintains the lead with that 28. He's now caught up to the back of the 27. We'll see what he can do here as he tries to find a way around this 27, trying to solve the Rubik's Cube of getting the lead. Deerman is kind of backed off, though. He's kind of, uh, Wheeler's kind of lost his help. So we'll see what that 28's able to do. Honestly, I don't think they're going to make it to the end. I think we're going to see a very late pit cycle here. Here comes the 28. He got to run off a of turn four. He's now underneath Oscar Duvall. They're going to be side by side entering one. Wheeler on the inside. He's going to slide up the track. The 27 trying to roll the top. The 92 is in the, is in the wall. And that is going to kill the momentum of the 92 car. So that is not what Summers wanted to see, but they're still side by side into turn number three. Deerman's closing in on these two. Boyd is closing in on these two. And Duvall's going to roll the tops. He's going to roll the top side and looks like he's going to clear Wheeler on the front straightaway. I, I, I was thinking that he was losing time just because he was saving his tires. And it looks like he was as he takes back another commanding lead over Adrian Wheeler and Deerman and Boyd and Bryant. But he's going to have to fight for everything here. Like we said earlier, he is fighting for his career. He has no secure ride next season in either series. So we'll just have to see how it turns out here tonight at Chicagoland as Duvall is putting on a clinic and fighting for it. Adrian Wheeler, who not too long ago was also racing for his career. He's trying to get his second win of the year in that 28. Checkered flag racing has been very good in this second half of the season. But Wheeler still needs to try and find a way around that 27 car. And they are having a dogfight for third back there. We saw Brian try a three wide move a lap earlier. Oh, they almost got into each other again, the 32 and the three. They just can't get off of each other. It is getting crazy here. Here comes Wheeler to the inside. He's got a lot bigger of a run here this time. And if he can make that inside lane work, he might have a shot here on the 27. But like you mentioned, the 27 did a great job saving his tires while he was up there. So he's able to roll the top, unlike the 28. But the 28 is staying there on the inside lane. And they're going to be side by side off of turn number four. And here comes George Bryant in third place, making his way through, trying to get another win and make his spo new sponsor Gillette happy there with that full time funding now. The 27 of Duval, though, still rolling the high side. A lot of those drivers in that pack back there rolling the way top right next to the wall, trying to make oh something goodness. work Here there. Here comes Brian. He's there. Brian. Oh, he's trying to make a move to the inside, but he's going to get the door shut on him by Adrian Wheeler. The 27 still rolling that top middle lane as it is getting real dicey up here at the front. Tamron Bellinger takes that fourth spot away. Here also comes trying to Brian. get up here. Three wide inside, for the lead! Wide. Is he gonna make the pass? There's still three wide down the back straightaway. Here comes Here Bellinger. Here comes Bellinger! Duvall has lost it up on the outside lane. Bellinger with a head of steam now. This thing is getting crazy up here. Brian's gonna get the lead, but for how long? Here comes the 32 to the inside lane. Bellinger's back to the inside of Brian trying to battle for the lead, and the 27 of Duvall is right there with his teammate behind him. Bryant is going to hold on to the lead just for right now. The 27 trying to look to the inside to get that second spot away. Trying to get back to the lead. But here comes JT Boyd trying to make it three wide for third. And Bryant has pulled away. He's going to get the lead here in the L1 car. This will be a huge points day for him considering where the 11 is running. He's still running back. Oh, no, the 25. Oh, that's a shame for Luana Connie. It looks like she is also... They're four wide right now. Oh, is that going to oh work off the gosh. corner? Oh, I don't they like keep the it together for now. If they're still four wide off of turn four, this is going to end That's... very badly, but it looks like they sorted it out. Boyd's going to drive through it. He's going to move up to third. Like I was saying before, though, the 25 who's running top 10 had some sort of camshaft issue. Yeah, camshaft issue. And that that is a tough, tough blow for the Connie Twins Motorsports driver. Yeah, that's just what they get for me picking them in the pre-race to win. Uh, I apologize to their team wholeheartedly. Uh, but for right now, George Bryan is commanding his lead and making it larger. I think they might be catching a lap car. I might be wrong. It's oh, they are. They're, ca they're catching the points. Oh, this could get interesting right now between the 0-1 leading this race, possibly in a spot to win, and the points leader having the worst race of his entire season so far. It could get a little bit interesting between those two. 
We'll just have to wait and see as the NH Motorsports teammates running third and fourth right now, trying to just get a good run in now as the 32 car is hooking the inside, trying to catch that 01 of George Bryant. I wonder if we're going to start seeing some cars pit here. We're getting late into the race, but some of these guys pitted really early on lap 30, so I wonder... I don't know if anyone's going to be able to make it to the end on one stop. I think it's going to be a really late two-stopper, so if that is the case, it's going to come down entirely to the pit crews to see who wins this race. Brian in front, but he does not have that big of a lead over... Oh my goodness, it's a Toyota 1 through 4 right now. He does not have a big lead over the 32 or the NH cars. And I think any of these guys that are in this lead pack, back to ninth with Kate Summers, have a shot to win it if they have a fast enough pit stop. But lap 61, seven laps to go. Brian's going to run the top lane there. I'm not sure. I'm not so sure, though. The tire fall off is about one second. We'll see if any of these guys end up pitting here. Oh, they're going low. I think they might be pitting here this time. Bye. And if that's the case, this could be huge. It is. But the 27 is coming in, and the three. That's what, those were all the cars that pitted early. And now we got to keep an eye on some of these guys that pitted later, like the 65 of Gino. I think they we have to watch the six. Yeah, the 65 of Gino and the 88 of Joe Smith both pitted at the last cycle spot. So we'll just have to see what those two drivers can do. Maybe they saved enough to where they can make it to where they only need a splash of fuel. Boyd's going to come down are, now. These guys, I think, are taking tires. Here comes Brian. He's going to come in with Boyd. Bellinger's still out there in the 32, along with the 65 of Gino. And yeah, these guys are taking... No, they're taking two tires. These guys are taking two. The 92 took four, though. Oh, I don't know. I don't th I don't like that move by the 92 I think, car. I, I think that's a bad call this late in the race to be taking four tires, especially when you are in the lead pack racing for the win. Lap 63, Bellinger. Bellinger comes in now. Gino will stay out an extra lap. This is going to come down to pit strategy here. Is Gino going to be able to save enough to only take a splash at the end and not have to worry about tires? Here you see Brian exiting the pits alongside the 11 of Barry, who's about to get lapped. And Brian has to slow down to let him by. And 77 is going to catch up to him because of that. But we'll see. These guys that came in that time also took two tires. Here comes the 77 on that pack. DuPont and the 65 are still out there, but I believe they're going to be pitting oh, now. Collision! Oh! Nearly a massive accident there, but they're both going to safely get Duvall's out of gonna harm's get way. Duval's going to get That's penalty. Gonna... He missed the commitment cone. That is huge for the 98. He's second in points. That is going to be Jordan. a big loss for him. Brian and Boyd, I think, are... Yeah, Brian's battling with the 11. There's the 32 of Bellinger. And Brian should be able to pass the 32, but we're, we're going to watch the 65. Oh, did the 65, the 65 splash and go. And the 98 didn't get a penalty, so he's still in this. Oh, my goodness. Let's see where Gino comes out relative to the cars in front. Oh, Brian's oh, that's way gonna back be, there. Oh, that's going to be, that's going to be trouble there for the 01 of Bryant if these two cars get in front of him. They're going to get and in front of him. That's exactly what's going to happen. Jack Gino's going to hold the lead, but these guys do not have fresh tires. It's only a matter of time until they catch them. Brian's at full speed. These guys are not. If Brian can get by the 98 fast, it's not over for him. We're coming to two laps to go, and Jack Gino trying to get his, I believe, fifth career win, which would tie him for first all time with Jacob Lopez in the one. Brian trying to get the run on the 98 for second, and these guys are on very old tires. We'll see if Brian's able to catch him. It's going to be close here at the end of this thing. Coming down the back straightaway, Brian's going to clear the 98. He's going to have a lap and a half to catch up to the 65, and once again, it comes down to these two for the third time this season. I I cannot believe that Gino has played his cards right as we take the white has flag, he though, George Brown. Has he? That oh, what is really quick. He might catch him. Half a second there in the turn one. He might get him in the three and four. Oh, he got a huge team. Down the back straightaway. They're side by side. The 65 does not have the tires. And Brian's going to pass him on the last lap. George Bryan coming at a turn number four is going to steal it from Gino. Gino thought he had the strategy, but he's going to come up short. George Bryan, third career win, second one of the season, and a statement win for the championship.
Oh my goodness. I that, cannot that, believe it. That was an incredible finish. I'd never expected anything like that to happen. The 27 of Duval still comes home with a third place. That'll surely help him in some con contract talks there. But, oh my gosh, I, I, I thought Gino may have had it there, but he get completely blew turns one and two on his old tires, trying to drive his car harder than it could go. And George Bryant just sailed by him and took the win away. Oh my gosh, what a finish. And what a statement win for that 01 car, too, especially with that new sponsor. They're definitely going to be staying on now for seasons to come. Oh, my goodness. The first lap, the first last lap passed in the Cup Series this season. Uh, I don't know what Joe and Smith's it, doing in the pits, but... Uh, he's going backwards. Never, never, never mind that, but... He'll come home with 12. <laughs> I, I totally respect that move by Jack Gino. That was a heck of a strategy call, and he still ended up gaining spots out of it, but just did not have the tires to hold off George Bryan on the last lap, but man, what a finish here at Chicagoland. This track did not disappoint. And uh, I, I am uh, I'm, I'm shaking after that. That was incredible. And what good runs for the 16 car of Corbin Taps and the 39 of Lake and Herndon. Those guys they, getting top 10s too. They showed up out of no, nowhere. They might have pulled the same strategy that Gino did. DuPont we we talk about George Bryan gaining a lot of sp uh gaining a lot of points on Tim Barry. Dupont's also going to gain a ton of points. He finished fourth, despite that almost disaster contact with the two car of uh of Rhea Wickham. Of course, uh, Dupont came in fifty six points back. Bryan came back sixty points back. I think Bryan will take second in points, but Dupont will still be close to him. Wow. Here's your top 10 here. Brian, Gino, Duvall, DuPont, Boyd, a double top five for NH Motorsports. Tamron Bellinger, Adrian Wheeler, Corbin Taps, Billy Smith, and Lakin Herndon. And once again, the rookie showing out here today. Finishing fifth, seventh, eighth. And I guess if you count Billy Smith, I guess you could count him. He's technically in the rookie of the year race now because he's run enough races. Uh, fifth, seventh, eighth, and ninth for the rookies. And Tim Barry finished 33rd one lap down, the last car to finish the race under power. Just a disaster of a race for the 11. But he does have the big points lead. He's still going to have the points lead after this race. And that's uh, that's the benefit you get for building up that big points lead. But uh, they're going to be a lot closer to him now. 32 cars finishing on the lead lap here today. No cautions at all in this race only two retirees and they were both mechanical failures so what a thrilling race here in the windy city and the trucks so can you give us a recap of this race and maybe give us a preview of what we're in for next week we're going to we're going to be headed back out west to phoenix at the phoenix raceway but uh this is no ordinary phoenix it, this is a this is a phoenix that Caleb found not too long ago, and it has cooked in almost all the test races we've had. So can you give us a recap of this race and maybe a preview for next week's race? Well, shockingly, we didn't have a massive wreck on the first lap, and Oscar Duvall and the three of Billy Smith came came out and showed what they had. Both of them, well, not both of them being, I, I don't even think the 27's a rookie. I, I don't really know. I haven't commentated that much. I haven't really tuned Duvall's into much of the races. Duval's been around since season one. It's Boyd that's well, the rookie on that team. Yeah, yeah, but but Duval and Billy Smith showing out early on. Duval dominating the entire race, especially after saving his tires. But he just couldn't hold on to the lead after um the 01 got up there and the got up there. The 18 finished 13th, by the way. Don't think we ever mentioned that falling out of the top five there after having a really strong day. But and. The, on the second round of pit stops, Jack Gino tries to stretch his fuel a little bit farther, does a splash and go, doesn't take tires, comes out with the lead along with Kevin DuPont in second. DuPont's going to finish fourth, but Gino had the lead coming to the white flag with a charging George Bryan in pursuit and lost it on the back straightaway. And George Bryan takes his second win of the season. A huge statement win for that team and that driver especially. They're going to be celebrating really hard tonight. And you can't you can't fault Gino or DuPont, both of them, 
staying out there trying to get the win, but this is going to be a huge points gain for Bryant and DuPont, considering the fact that the points leader, J Tim Barry, finished as the only car one lap down in 33rd place, having his worst race of the entire season. And when we go in the Phoenix, it's going to be a much different race than this. It's a shorter track with it much flatter than this is. And it's just going to be a dogfight between Br Bryant, DuPont, and the 11 of Tim Barry. As Tim Barry's going to have to try to rein his team back in after an atrocious performance this week. Yeah, what a thrilling race here at Chicagoland. And uh, Phoenix, I think Phoenix could be a low-key good race. Again, we've done some testing on the track. We were originally going to go to Richmond there. Richmond had some panic line issues, and uh, I didn't want to deal with them for, for the second season in a row. So we kind of we cut it off from the schedule. Uh, we're going to try and fix them by the time we come back next season. Uh, so hopefully it'll get back on the schedule. Because I really do like Richmond and the racing at Richmond. So... But Phoenix, pretty good substitute, pretty similar racing. So I think uh, I think we can get away with it for this season. But yeah, that was an incredible race here at Chicagoland. And this was also a last minute addition to the schedule. We were supposed to go to Minnesota, but we ended up uh, swapping it out for Chicagoland. And uh, it definitely didn't disappoint. The first last lap pass of the season here. And George Bryan gets a second win in four races. So that has been, he's been on an incredible charge as of late. And uh, he's definitely a championship contender. And it's uh, incredible what that 01 team has done. And, you know, I haven't really been keeping track of the constructor standings, but considering this is a one car team and they're like second in the points, they're probably leading the constructors too. Trying to replicate what Streamline Racing did last year with their single car operation and kind of stealing the championship away from these bigger teams. But yeah, that's going to do it for today here at Chicagoland. Thank you for Troxel for coming on to uh, CoCom this race. Uh, it was nice having you there. Love the energy here today. And uh, on behalf of him and me, uh, this is Left Turn Productions signing out.